forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Gangsters, cops, and politicians get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision. Saludos, it's your host, Gabe Morales. As you can tell by the thumbnail, we are going to discuss the Nuestra Familia today. More specifically, we are going to get into detail into how they operate and cover their constitution. But first, let me give you a quick rundown of Nuestra Familia history as covered on previous videos on this channel, as well as in my book, The History of the Nuestra Familia. <laughs> Money, power, and control is the most common thread to all prison gangs. The official symbol of the NF is a sombrero, which signifies their cultural pride as being Mexicano Chicanos. The sword is for the battles they fought. And if you notice, on the tip of the sword is blood drops for the blood that was shed in the cause. The NF has an oath. If I go forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. This is something that NF prospects have to recite and remember, as well as the Constitution and other laws of their organization. Contrary to what you may have heard or read on some websites and publications, the Nuestra Familia, Spanish for Our Family, was not a criminal organization of primarily Mexican-American or Chicanos who had their origins in Northern California. No. In fact, all of the original founders were from Southern California. Some of these individuals were Little John Valdez from Little Valley, who was chosen to be the first padre of the organization, Gonzalo Chalo Hernandez from Bakersfield, who actually started the group, but I understand put Valdez in charge because he was soon to parole and they wanted to carry their organization out to the street. There was Freddy Gonzalez from San Diego, Black Jess Valenzuela from Oxnard, Colonia Chiques, Bruce Huero Morgan from Clanton, and Robert Dairo Marina from Bicoma. And after Little John Valdez paroled, another guy, Juan Lips Valdez, was chosen to be the NFM Padre. And he was from Basset Grande in the San Gabriel Valley. As you can probably tell, all of these original Nuestra Familia Mexicana leaders were from Southern California, not Northern California. When Chalo first started the organization, he had to be very careful because the Mexican Mafia was on the prey. So the organization was often codenamed the Blooming Flower. This is not to be confused with Nuevas Flores or New Flowers today who are NF dropouts or former NF associates. Also, while the Bureau of Prisons has put the validation title of LNF on the organization, or the O as many call it, in my 40 plus years experience, monitoring and dealing directly with West Familia as a civilian, as an officer, and as the founder of the International Latino Gang Investigators Association, I have never seen an LNF tattoo on a member. Neither did our first vice president, Rick Cowboy Handel, who worked for years as a correction officer at the Santa Clara County Jail 
which is known to be an NF stronghold and who dealt directly with many NF brass. No, it has always been just the NF or NFM unseen on these early panos. The NF and its traditional rival, La M.A., or the Mexican Mafia, is covered in multiple previous videos on this channel, started before there were Sorenos or Norteños in existence. The M.A. started in the late 1950s, and the Nuestra Familia Mexicana started forming as a clandestine cultural revolutionary organization in the mid-1960s, first at the California training facility in Soledad, as Nuestra Familia Mexicana. The original constitution reads, Article 1, Name and Purpose. This organization shall be known as Nuestra Familia Mexicana, Latina. The purpose of this organization is to help with the progress and to serve to bring more unity to the people of Mexican extraction. Article 2, Objectives. The objective of this organization shall be to discuss contemporary problems of the people of Mexican extraction, such as social, political, economical, cultural, and to find workable solutions to such problems confronting our people today. In fact, the early NFM had schools and lessons to learn about social issues, political figures such as Cesar Chavez, economics in the barrios, and cultural awareness. Section 21B reads, to improve our conduct and personal representation in order to learn to cope with our environment, both here at the institution and in the free society, to assist each other educationally with personal problems. Article 3, and this is very important to remember as far as what happened later, the membership of this organization shall be restricted only to those of Mexican extraction. Chalo Hernandez initially voted down an individual who later took control of the organization named Robert Babo Sosa, who was Puerto Rican. Sosa never forgot this disrespect, and after he was put in charge, put a hit out on Chalo with several near-successful attempts. The Constitution goes on to read in Article 6 that the officers of this organization in order of seniority shall consist of a padre, hermano mayor, hermano menor, hijo mayor, and hijo menor. It is my understanding that when Chalo first started this organization, that there were over a dozen individuals who were interested in this blooming flower. But he told them that this would be a commitment for life, a blood-in, blood-out organization, and that if they wanted to step away, they could at that time. And all did, except five, were given one of these five positions. I'll probably have to do a special episode on Chalo Hernandez. He's a very interesting figure. But more details are included in my book on the NF. The NFM then moved to San Quentin, where the infamous Shoe War of 1968 occurred. As I stated in the Familia Cinco video, there were on-again, off-again peace talks with the MA from 1969 to 72. The Texas Syndicate and some of the Maravillas, who did not agree with what the MA was doing, but this all ended when the Nuestra Familia killed MA icon Rodolfo Shain Carena on December 17, 1972. But it did not happen as shown in the movie American Me. It was the Nuestra Familia who killed him. I'll probably have to do a special episode on that incident, but I have all the prison reports where it happened at Chino Prison, both before and after that pivotal moment in prison gang history. In 1973, the NFM Constitution was changed after several attempts were made on Juan Lips Valdez in prison from 1968 to 1972, and he finally dropped out and debriefed to the prison gang task force. It was at that point that new elections were held, and Robert Babo Sosa was elected the sole Nuestro General of the Nuestra Familia, and he chose death row Joe Gonzalez as his first captain. The prison gang reorganized from family titles like Padre, Emano, Hijo, etc., to a military structure with generals, captains, lieutenants, regiments, commanders, squads, etc. And it did away with the revolutionary aspects that Chalo strived for and focused on criminal activities. It also dropped the Mexicana part of the name since Baba was Puerto Rican and since by that time they had other non-Mexican members, including whites. The Aryan Brotherhood and MA remained NF traditional enemies for decades, while the Black Gorilla family were viewed as allies, since they had mutual enemies. The Nuestra Familia were locked down after CO Jerry Sanders was killed at DVI in November 1973 by radical Black prisoners. This greatly impacted the Nuestra Familia and Black Gorilla family operations in the system. After hearing some videos, reading some articles and books, I could tell that some people were just schooled wrong with information not based on hard documentation or historical facts. There was no Nuestra Familia in 1960, as some have claimed. No, 
They started in the mid-1960s. Also, as I stated in the Mesinko video, they were not the predecessor of the NF. Under the Babo Sosa regime, the NF expanded rapidly. By the late 1970s, some law enforcement believed that there were around 700 made or close NF associates. But that number was greatly impacted after a bloody war between the Babo Sosa, Death Row Joe faction against the Black Bob Vasquez, Brown Bob Viermontes faction in the late 1970s through 1980s, which led to hundreds of them defecting as CDC locked down most validated gang members during that same time frame or hit them with RICO cases. So there was never even close to 7,000 made carnales in the NF, like some people claim. I don't know how they come up with some of this nonsense. I sometimes see or hear. And according to CDC statistics in the year 2000, there was only 137 West Familiar members and 107 individuals noted as being NF associates. And today, especially with all the infighting and dropouts, there are probably under 100 still active made NF carnales and under 200 made California Mexican Mafia in the county, state, and federal correction systems today. That is a fact. By the mid-1970s, members of Northern California Chicano gangs did start identifying themselves as Norteños. This was first documented with the Fresno Regiment around 1974, and Norteños were the primary recruitment pool for the NF. Meanwhile, there were MA members in Northern California since the early days, but the MA concentrated on recruiting primarily from Southern California, Sureño Varios, and neighborhood gangs by the late 1970s. There are a couple of high-ranking NF members still alive who hail from Southern California. Now, there are lots of Sureños in Northern California today, and I know this is going to upset some active Norteño members, but I think many of the NF brass are already aware of this. I talked to a regional Bay Area police analyst who is very knowledgeable on Norteño gangs and the NF, and way back around the year 2000, he told me at a training conference, you know what, Gabe? We have thousands of gang members in our database. And even I was surprised when the last printout indicated that Sureños slightly outnumbered Norteños. Now, some of you may say, what is the Hurano? I can tell you, I haven't seen a lot of these databases and intelligence a lot more than you think. So ponte trucha, homeboy. He added that this was the first count where that had happened at that time, and he had no doubt that Sereños were rapidly expanding in Northern California, as I do. Meanwhile, there are rarely any Norteños documented in Southern California, according to my law enforcement sources, as well as gangster accounts, unless they are just passing through. Now, I realize that some of you may be upset by these statements, and maybe have already hit the X on this video and opted out of what you don't want to hear or admit. But... Sureños have always outnumbered Norteños, and the MA has always been larger than West Familia. Pero ya sabes, even Grandpa Skip has addressed this dilemma in the past and in recent NF filters. So, hey, it is what it is. I don't make it up. I'm more like an empire. Just call them balls and strikes. I have no favoritism to either side. It is true that the NF membership, which primarily operates in prisons, as carnales rarely remain on the streets for a very long time, once influenced much of the criminal activity of thousands of Norteño gang members in Northern California. But that has changed in recent years, Northern Riders, New Flowers, and other groups that were covered in my dropout prison gang episode. The NF would often convince young Norteños to put in work and make contributions, as they like to call it, to the O. They call it this term to appear less oppressive than the Mexican Mafia, who flat out call it taxes or paying rent in order to operate and exist as a Sereno gang member. But the NF propaganda is just that. If you don't contribute, they will take your money and your dope and your car and whatever else they feel they deserve as a made NF carnal or as an ambassador of a made carnal. In other words, as an NF associate, of one, provided they were given proper clearance through their channel by NF shot callers. The West Familia's main source of income are distributing drugs within the prison systems. But in more recent years, they have also made a lot of feria, introducing, selling, and controlling other contraband, such as cell phones. Originally, the NF made a directive that you couldn't use heroin, but that did not go over well with the majority of tecatos addicts in the home. It went over even less when they found out that Babo and Death Row Joe were using Chiva and allegedly embezzling funds. Both put out hits on multiple members and cleaned house. 
This caused a lot of paranoia in the home, and a lot of guys stayed in their cells and would rarely come out, thus the term hermits. In my opinion, the Mexican Mafia and Sureños are more fluid. As I stated before, the MA does not have a written constitution, although they do have recognized informal reglas that was covered in a Mexican Mafia video. The Sureños were even more fluid until they became a little more organized under MA direction after the MA edict was put out in the early 90s. It was shortly after that that I started seeing copies of Sureño Reglas come out of the L.A. County Jail and discovered on different yards in the California Department of Corrections. But in my opinion, the, the West Familia has always been more organized with constitutions that have been reformatted over the years, as well as directives to record all known members on the streets and in jails and prisons. Thus, these rule calls differentiate between members in good standing and members that are on a hit list, sometimes called the bad news list. So while these roll calls make it easier to determine who is who within the organization, it also made it easier for law enforcement to keep track of these individuals. Now, I have to be frank here. The Nuestra Familia didn't control a lot of pintas. They did control DVI in the late 70s and had strongholds at one time at the California Institution for Men at CIM when Baba was there and parts of other prisons. And so the Nuestra Familia had to stick together in order to survive. When Black Bob Vasquez took over the O and won his battle against Babo Sosa, the NF was reorganized. No longer would there be a sole Nuestro General. They decided there would be a Mesa of three generals. This later was changed again to the overall governing body or high command. Here we see the Mesa system that was in place in the 1980s. There has been no Mesa system since the 1990s. It is just the overall governing body. Both the Nuestra Familia and Nuestra Raza have had category systems, also known as CAT systems, over the years, such as CAT 3, which is a general, CAT 2, which is a captain, CAT 1, which are basic carnale soldiers. In my MA videos, I showed numerous examples of big homies abusing their authority and violating the recognized reglas. But the NF big homies do the same thing. The California MA does not have a written constitution. The NF does. So let's break down the NF Constitution line by line now. The Constitution of the Norse Familiaries. The supreme authority within this O is divided into three separate offices. Each shall have equal authority with different responsibilities to carry out and fulfill the objectives of La Nuestra Familia. The three generals will have the power to carry out daily affairs of the O. They will always remain subordinate to the will of the inner council, which as a whole is the ultimate authority of this O. The inner council was made up of captains. At one time, up to 10 captains were allowed. Although I believe with all the turmoil in the state and federal faction, there are less than that now. The appointed generals and inner council members must swear a new blood oath, having the sacred qualities of being a seasoned, experienced, and dedicated familianos. The appointed generals solely have authority to declare war for the entire world. Once in a state of war, peace will not prevail until the announcement from the general council. No appointed general is to interfere and infringe on others' respected office, but must work in hand for the betterment and will of this O's advancement. Any and all major decisions that involve this O as a whole must be brought forth and addressed to the general council to review a pre-forced majority approval. So, like I said, the overall governing body has three generals. Each of them have different responsibilities which I'll now get into detail. The Street Regiment General, or SRG, is responsible for the security and overall street operations. To appoint any regiment security, the General Council must be informed of said C, which means Carnal, for screening and security clearance. The SRG has the authority to appoint regiment security during a state of emergency. The SRG will be responsible for maintaining order and contact to those appointed regiment commanders under his authority overseeing street functions. So let me interject here. All major areas where the NF is active out in the streets, as seen here on this map, are supposed to have a regimental commander appointed to it. And that sometimes has been the cause of friction over the years. The street regiment general is responsible for guidance and direction of all familianos leaving the streets, and all will be signed to a regiment once released from the Pinta. But like I said, they rarely are out in the streets for very long. They usually end up being under surveillance and hit with a RICO if they do anything under the O. The SRG must work 
in hand with the GOP for this purpose, keeping him updated of any C or Carnal returning to the Pinta. The General Pintas, the office of the GOP, is responsible for security and overall Pinta functions. The third general's position is the General Advocate's Office. This is more like the investigative position for the organization. They look at what is happening on, on the street when communicating with the SRG and what is happening inside the Pintas when communicating with the GOP and often have the tiebreaker vote. Under the General Advocate's Office, responsibility will fall the safeguarding of the organization's main bank deposits. Supposedly, as I stated earlier, all NF regiments are supposed to have a bank whereby they are to replace funds and report this to the GAO. However, this rarely happens successfully. Either the money turns up missing or there's not as much money as many would expect in bank accounts. They will hold these bank accounts in a third party's name, such as a girlfriend or a wife, who are also some of their main communication channels even though females cannot be made NF members. Some of them have a lot of power, which a lot of Carnales have complained they have also abused, just because their old man was a shot caller. Some of these females also ended up being killed for either not fulfilling their obligations or being suspected of being informants. As I referred to in the Babo Sosa, Death Row Joe versus Black Bob, Vasquez, Brown Bob, Vita Montes war, there still are procedures for impeachment in the NF Constitution. It states that any seated member of the three offices, being the three generals positions, or inner council may be impeached if the opinion of a three-fourths majority vote decides said Carnal is no longer working in the best interests of the organization. It also has a procedure for elections. The replacement of either of the three main offices, being general positions, will come from the ranks of the best qualified members within the inner council, that being captains. The Constitution also clearly states how to handle discipline and conduct, although many allege that there has been favoritism in the past and abuse of power, no different than Babo Sosa and Death Row Joe. In fact, these were some of the accusations between the state generals and the federal generals in their feud post-Black Widow. I've been waiting for some of the heat to die down on that. As I've stated previously, I don't get involved in current politics. Although, as you can tell, I have dived pretty deep into past politics and history of these prison gangs. So maybe after the heat dies down, I'll do my spiel on what I believe happened in the state versus federal factional war. And so, just thought I'd give you a little information before I get deeper into the West Familia roll call. Hope you learned something new from this video and continue watching as I appreciate your support in respectful comments. For now, this is Gabe Morales signing off with Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. If I go forward, follow me. If I hesitate, push me. If they, I am a kill me, avenge me. If I am a traitor, kill me. Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians, get ready to rock. We're on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision.